as it goes Take it as it goes To my own dreams Yeah, I'm finally seeing What it is to succeed Tired of waking up Feeling bad about myself For life I see In somebody else Not about the money Cars Not even the blame It's about how you feel Without Turn the power off There's a bigger world Outside of our phones What's in your head It makes you more alone Yeah, time is a poison You shouldn't do it I know a man, he could give me therapy, what's the use of therapy, you don't want to change babe, I talk too much, when I got nothing to say, maybe it's the game. <laughs> oh. oh man look at this we can even go into the camera we're at the place we're at the place with the thing let's adjust this a little bit let's get this a little centered look at that look at that look at that what's up everybody uh it is tuesday it is the 16th it is tuesday the 16th uh, it has been a couple weeks since we've had too many ideas, and here we are, having too many ideas. I'm getting comfortable, I got my back brace, so that's how we know it's going to be at least an hour and 20 minute show. I got my back brace. Uh, how's everyone? How's everyone? It's good to see some of these names flying up here again. Good to see all the names flying up here again. Uh, I feel, you know, overwhelmed. I hope everyone is doing what they can do. Jaws is not great, but it's all right. It's bad when I eat. Talking is getting a little better, but eating is still a nightmare, which I do a lot. I do a lot. Um, so it is what it is. But, uh, 
This is live. We're live right now. This is the livest thing of all time. Uh, well, that's not true. It's a 10 second delay and there's way more live things. There's a lot going on. You know, there's a lot going on. It's, it's, I hope everyone is, is, is doing what they can to stay sane and to, to, to contribute and, and help and be positive as well. You're flying? Well, let's uh uh let's get that's, that's, that's our intro music let's get a little some days here if you guys don't know this is too many ideas i'm your host kyle Ayers. our music during the episode today is that's so that's my that's full body i can't even gesture over to the mirror this music is andy frasco in the un thank you so much for following the show thank you for being here everybody uh if this is your first time here you can follow the show it's free i think it's up there i can't tell Exactly. If that's where it is, appreciate you following the show. Raccoon Fink, that's fun. And Jay Kester, uh, both of you. I'm happy you guys are here as well. Uh, you regulars, I love seeing your names. You know, we were rolling this thing every day for a while, and now here we are. Uh, there we go. Over my left shoulder, there's the follow. You can also, if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free. Uh, you link your Amazon account with Twitch, you subscribe, it helps the show out, and I put this in here. Happy Pride, everybody. Uh, Twitch is donating 10 cents to the Trevor Project and to the National Black Justice Coalition. For every paid sub, gifted sub, or cheers of 300 bits or more. Um, so happy Pride, and so look at that. Anything you're doing here on the channel is going to help right there. And let me go ahead and get it started. If my order will be completed soon. We got a full docket today. We got a full docket today. There we go. Let's get it started a little bit. Ten subs. Ten subs coming out. So whoever gets those, good good, good on ya. But I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all a lot. Yeah. Happy Pride, everybody. Happy Pride. Uh, what a time. You know, here we are. Look, they're going out slow. I don't really know how they work. Yeah, I clicked a button, but some of that'll go back. Some of that's going out to the Trevor Project. It's great. Uh, we got a full show. We got a full show. Jean Grey has never seen a Gone with the Wind. <laughs> I'm so excited for that. Uh, we've acted out her script before at a live Never Seen It, but I'm not sure it ever made its way into production. And so here we are. She has never seen Gone with the Wind, and she wrote it, rewrote it, and... Or I would imagine. I would imagine. I hope you have a good time. I hope you have a, a COVID-safe time doing any celebration that you're doing. Uh... So Gina's never seen Gone with the Wind. I don't know, this is too many ideas. I throw too much stuff together. We used to do this show every day. First it was called Social Distancing, then it was called an early show. Now we're combining it all into a week and we got some ideas. I got this whole thing here, what I want to talk about with everybody. So this is our show docket today. Uh, we got the opening, we got the monologue, we got the Jaws promo, Gene, her script, Rob Clip. It looks like Rob's Clid, but it's Clip. Then Rob, some games. Lindsay's gonna be on here talking Pop Tarts at the end. Thank you for subscribing there. Either small tracks or small T uh, excess with an R in the middle. S tracks. Um. And so we're here. And yeah, that thing's still just trudging out those notifications, but that's all right. It does what it's got to do. But thank you for subscribing. Thanks if you follow the show. It's gonna be fun. We can talk, we can hang out, we can interact. We got our games going on. We got this script with Gene going on here in a few minutes. Rob's gonna be here, gonna show some of his stand-up, and then we're gonna play some of our games, some Build the Perfect Movie with Rob, and we're gonna play uh, some Rapid Fire Questions, and then the, the Pop-Tart conversation continues. I cannot believe how much we talk about Pop-Tarts on this show, but Lindsay's gonna be in here still talking to us about Pop-Tarts in a little bit, even more. You know how I feel, you know I know they're smaller. And they're, they're, they're screwing us over. They made them littler. Anyways. I mean, what am I even talking about? So we normally do something here on this show called a monologue as though everything is normal. And this is just a normal monologue from a normal talk show. A monologue as 
And so generally what I would do with the monologue is do some monologue jokes that don't address the news. Uh, some monologue jokes. You know, these late night hosts like to do the, the goofy news story monologue jokes, the things like that. Uh, this week, we're going we're gonna to veer a little bit in a different direction. So I was asked to submit some haikus to a book of haikus. I don't want to talk too much about it. And so a few of these haikus, I, I, wrote, I wrote some, and they're all pretty much related to nothing and they're just tiny little things and so i'm just going to read you guys my haikus as uh, as though everything is normal if that makes sense so these are covidless haikus um also no one's thrown the before and after in there today yet okay but these are covidless haikus i don't have uh uh a graphic for covidless haikus but we do we know how they work is everyone haiku familiar Five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. Line one, line two, line three. These are COVIDless. And I will copy and I will paste them into the chat as I read them. Because I think they play visually a little better. Don't you guys feel? But here we are reading them anyways. Um, so these are these are some, some haikus as though we're not in a pandemic. And these are just normal. I wish are. I don't have that much time. These are just normal haikus. Here's some haikus. And let me know what you guys think. This might be in a book, maybe. I don't know, but you didn't hear me. All right, here we go. Haiku number one. Per my last email is just me being polite. Please fucking reply. Haiku one. Haiku one. Maybe we'll get some music behind us while we're doing this here. Let's do some... Yeah, we'll get a little quiet music. There's one. They don't play as well, the visual in the chat. It doesn't give me the... Uh, Page breaks I was looking for. Here we go. Haiku 2. Haiku 2. Baseball is a sport you can somehow win if you walk more than others. There's Haiku 2. There's Haiku 2. Alright, here we go. Haiku 3. Haiku 3. You need to read this article I sent you. No, I didn't read it. There's Haiku 3. We got what seven seven here all right here we go thank you so much for the follow there here we go haiku four next one next one oh back right oven burner i am sorry i will never use you there it is right there there it is right there next haiku next haiku next haiku if they faked the moon landing, why did they have to wear those dang helmets? Here we go. There's our next haiku. We'll do two more. Two more. Although this one might be my favorite. When I die, someone scroll through my Netflix for me. It likes the scrolling. Here we go. Here we go. And our last one here. I am finally done watching The Sopranos. Now on to Altos. Folks. Those are some haikus. Those are some... We had some haikus and some low coups, I'll tell you that much. Uh, but we were there, and I appreciate y'all. So we'll see which ones did we like. Did we love some of them? Did we dislike some of them? Um, we will see. What I gonna I gotta I'm still gonna write some more. We're gonna pick and choose, and then we're gonna send some in. Um, okay, so now before we get Gene in here, Lokus, I'm sorry, I am sorry. Um, well, okay, I like haikus. That was pretty fun to write. It's a little. It's nice to have the limitations. All right, so if you guys listen to Never Seen It, my podcast, Never Seen It, you know. That uh, this last week we started to do a we got to crazy we got contacted by the people who make Jaws the movie Jaws the distributor not Steven Spielberg but I guess whoever is let's give that a little rotation whoever's distributing Jaws hit us up 
and asked if we wanted to uh, give away some Jaws 45th anniversary DVD, HD DVD, Blu-ray, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, we had a contest on the podcast uh, where if you drew your favorite blockbuster movie scene, because remember, Jaws is the OG blockbuster, according to Jaws in history. Uh, Jaws is the OG blockbuster. So if you we had we had people draw a scene from a blockbuster movie or really any movie, we were nice about it that they really loved and send it in, and then uh, it, you're eligible to win this thing. We're just gonna pick five of them at random. We're just picking five, totally at random, to give away this Jaws thing to. And so I'm gonna see if this thing just straight up works. And uh, so here we are. I'm gonna review and go and look through. Some of you can see the little, that's where the 45th anniversary limited edition, 4K, Ultra HD, Blu-ray, digital, whatever that book is, 44 page, because it's a crazy Jaws book. This thing looks so dope. It's got storyboards. It's got all these crazy things going on. We had people send in drawings of scenes from famous blockbusters they liked, and then I'm going to draw five of them at random right now, and those people are going to win that Jaws thing that's, I guess, below me right there. Um, but let's go through and look at some of these drawings real quick that I really, really liked um, in here. So here we, let, let's let's take a look at some of these. I mean, these are, we we got Alien. We're going through real, these are our eligible ones who are last here. Um, let's just pull them all up at the same time. All right, can we get Alien? Oh, my computer is not loving this game. Uh, we got another Alien, we got another Alien. Lindsay's gonna be on here in a little bit. Uh, we got a Jaws. We got a T2. We got a Ace Ventura. Oh, you just submitted right now? Did I just get it? If you send in the last two hours, I should have it. Where did you send it on? Oh, you just sent it right now? Well, okay, you know what I'm going to do? We're going to go through these, then I'm going to pull that one out, and I'm going to print it out, and I'm going to add it to the list as well. Because I got them all printed out right in there. All right, we got the thing. I like this one. It's sideways, though, but that's the house from Vertigo. We got Raiders of the Lost Ark. We got Toy Story. We got an Avengers Endgame here. I'm going pretty quick. We got a... I don't even know what this is. Does anyone actually know what this is? It's I'm wet and I'm hysterical. Am I... Do I... I don't know what movie this is from. Someone please tell me. Oh, I got you here. King Kong. Oh, no, let me take the picture. What is this? Basic Instinct? Oh, I haven't seen Basic Instinct. We got a last minute submission here. Boom. Throwing that right up. Not even, not even formatting it. Look at that King Kong. I'm going to print that off. I'm going to take a break in a second. I'm going to throw King Kong in there. Um, look at that. Was this the, is this the producers? Okay. People say Basic Instinct, Casablanca. What's going on? Let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. I love this one. Love this Pulp Fiction one. Uh, we got a sideways Top Gun here. I don't know why some of them came in sideways. I'm not uh, smart with this stuff. But we got a little Top Gun here. It's sideways. I didn't, you know, they drew it normal. This one, we got to talk about this. This is, I have this printed off, and I'm going to probably keep this. Because look at that gold bloom. Look at that. Look at that. That is so good. <laughs> oh, then we got Star Wars here. Look at the, this is the art. This is exactly what I wanted. This one is incredible. This is actually Jaws. Just some of this stuff is so good. And then we got a little dino DNA. You know Star Wars is my favorite. So we're going to draw five of these out of this box. I'm going to take a quick break because I'm actually going to print out that last one. Um, you know what we're going to do? Food for the King Kong that just submitted. We're not even going to print it out. I'm just going to use some paper. I'm going to write King Kong. Just like this. So you're eligible as well. I'm going to put it into the same box. And we're going to draw them out. So, let me go ahead and get this box. Magical box of... Ah, I wish I had some sort of... We should probably use, like, what? Uh, 
Maybe some music from the podcast here while we do this drawing. So we have the magical box of all of the drawings. You see, they're all in there. Five of these people are gonna win that Jaws set. Here we go. Number one, what drawing won Jaws? Dino DNA. Dino DNA. One JP, one Jurassic Park. Next up. Who's next? Our second alien. I love it. Look at him jumping out of the chest. They're all so good. If you drew something and you don't win, I'm going to mail you some stickers. Anyways, just for entering. Um, and I'll hit everyone up, obviously. Next up. Top Gun. Did he die when he jumped out of the ship? I've never seen Top Gun. I've never seen Top Gun before. You're the Dino DNA, Danny Dino DNA. You won. You won a Jaws box set. All right, we got two more. Next up. Ooh. Little Ace Ventura. And this is it. Last one. <laughs> I'm wet and I'm hysterical. <laughs> so we got our five winners over there. I'm going to message all of them. Um, if, if you didn't, I'm going to message you and send you some stickers and stuff like that as well. And thank you guys for entering. We're going to be right back with uh, Jean Grey and do a little bit of Never Seen Anything. So we'll be right back. Everybody, our first guest on Too Many Ideas tonight. She has never seen Gone with the Wind. Uh, please give it up for Jean Grey, everybody. Is it transition? There we go. We did it. Hello? Eh? There we go. Hello? Am I <laughs> unmuted? I, uh, it's such a... 
nightmare of all entertainment these days to build up all of the momentum and then be like, okay, did we push the buttons? Are all the switches is, is correct? That it? Is it on? <laughs> Let me get my little camera here. Is this all good? Is everyone's things? Are the things connected? Are we? Are uh, the, is it? Is it? Is it right? Can I hear? I can't hear. The, I can't hear. That's weird. <laughs> the, just the tech behind it. There is no more momentum. You just hope everyone comes along for the ride. No, it's, it's fine. I um, think. How are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? Not good. I I understand. I, I'm terrible. Yeah. Uh, we moved. Um, but okay. That's a whole other. That's that's fun to add what is historically one We're of the three state. most stressful things of someone's life to the world right yeah, now. Yeah. What you want to do is move to another state. That's what I hear. <laughs> yeah. I have uh I moved a desk. 20 minutes and it ruined a week of my <laughs> life <laughs> you want to you want to drive uh 12 hours uh with a cat in a u-haul oh i can't and, imagine uh, the cat just probably and then you he was great he was just really scared he didn't want to come out uh he was fine but uh and then you want to um get to a new place and be like this is a terrible place now we have to find a new home so how am I? <laughs> At least you seem to have a nice microphone. Um, so let's uh let's talk about Gone with the Wind and the history of this That's script here. So you've never seen Gone with the Wind. I've also never seen Gone with the Wind. Uh, good for both of us. It. Congratulations. It's just fun to see history come around to our side. It's very interesting. Um, because. I was so excited to do it because, uh, and, and I think I explained it uh, when we were doing it live. And like, why? I was like, because fuck Gone with the Wind, because <laughs> fuck this movie. <laughs> I remember I had a film professor in college, which uh, in Missouri, I think you can legally be a professor still. And he, <laughs> with when it came to a lot of these movies like Gone with the Wind and Casablanca and even mm -hmm. Citizen Kane, he basically was like, look, you know they exist, and you know some of their aspects influenced what is now actually good filmmaking. So we're, we kind of didn't... I think we watched this and came, but he kind of just was like, let's just sort of start in the 70s, and even then you have to leave, take this with this grain of salt. Yeah, I can't... Um, I don't... Uh, my, my mom, you know, loved uh, classic movies and movies, but she was also an old mom, and she was born in the 30s yeah. and I was like oh these are like your your things and I was like I'm not doing any of this and then um and then oh you like anyone who's out there if you want to like because I'm not giving you any teachable moments because no um but you should look up uh Hattie McDaniel and um kind of the the story around this movie and uh her uh, uh winning this oscar um, <laughs> you should look up where the where the award is now uh what happened uh with her speech um it's a you know go out there yeah have a good time people you're look allowed to, to to sort of it's so easy to find information these days but it seems like people's main way they would like to discover stuff is by bugging the person they found out about something sort of like it over and over again yeah, and you should probably fucking just just Google. Don't just don't Google. don't ask me. Don't <laughs> ask me. Just just strictly on a black level, don't fucking ask me. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask me. Uh well, no, I if I could have you do my emotional labor, it would really make me feel more comfortable. I don't know if that'll fit on a t shirt, but <laughs> Well, they'll make it fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll be really big white letters on a black shirt so, so you what can, is, like I, almost just not see the black anymore right one of those shirts where it's kyle and gene and and it just lists i don't even remember where that started I, I don't know what the first one of them was but by the time i saw it be the four founders of ucb i was like we could probably let okay. these shirts All right. go yeah that's, that's <laughs> the end of that shit i, I couldn't even um, tell you what it was i assume I, I i don't know where where it started but, um, I I feel like uh, so what did they do? They took this movie off off of oh, yeah. a, like a channel, and then people were fucking pissed off. I'm like, but they didn't they didn't fucking destroy every copy of the movie. This like, is you, such a it's 
You can still fucking watch it, you stupid racist. People really, really are mad about something they never think about not being able to be thought about again. I I need my I need my Confederate flags and I need my gown with the wind. Look, I, I just walk need around to, and I, I read need, the plaques I just need on to statues. Know it's, That's how I learn. I read the plaques on statues. It's as, the only way I learn, learn anything. <laughs> statues are how we learn. I you know when you went to school book, oh. and and your backpacks were so heavy because <laughs> you had to carry all those statues. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to pull. Well, you know, I uh, I lived in Missouri, which had the bold stance in the Civil War of indifferent. And, you know, Mm. they didn't see a decision on either side worth making a stand for. Uh, They were were good people on both sides. Oh, God. Which is like, I would say they were literally not good people on either side when it came to Missouri in the Civil War. There wasn't a good person on either side. If you can't hear that and decide and make a choice. Anyways, our public schools were very, you know. It was. I still think mm-hmm. in Kansas they teach creationism, and so. Um, huh. It, it, I mean, w- about once every five years, that becomes like that. a state supreme court issue, and then, uh, you know, the what I don't subscribe to the newspaper, so I don't know what the verdict ends up being. Kansas, <laughs> it's Kansas. Um, God, Kansas. All right, let's. I'm really let's, excited. I'm really. I'm very I'm, excited. I'm, I, 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 I am, I'm definitely in a place where like, I don't want to do like any more things on camera that I have to do. And then I was like, oh, this is a real good time. I was like, I wish I could do Gone with the Wind again. That would feel really yeah. good. Yeah, it is. So I, I don't want to, I, I, it's so funny, babe. I don't want to spoil the script for the not the movie it isn't for people. Um, so I have this set up here and we'll be, you guys will be able to see the script and read along and Gene is going to do every part. All of the parts, and so let's uh, uh, let's see if we can get that set up. Okay, look at that. Um, I think it's good, and I think it's ready. I don't have any music okay. or anything because you know too much sound with these weird streams at the same time, and they all just start to like zoom, like picks who the prominent sound is, and just kills everyone else's mm-hmm. audio. So, um, uh, just um, the sound of uh, black people screaming. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, great. Let me uh, just get just, that queued uh, up from my echoing, desktop audio. Just echoing uh, <laughs> across the the globe. All, <laughs> All right. right, so I'm gonna. <laughs> you are you you're gonna read on your screen, I assume. Yes. And I'll just scroll so everyone else here can uh, can follow along with us. Okay. And then uh, so this is uh, Jean Grey has never seen Gone with the Wind, but she rewrote it, and this is her script. Interior, bedroom. A fucking plantation. Oppression o'clock. A hazy light filters in through the tall white shutters of Scarlett O'Hara's bedroom. Rich velvet and brocade fill the space as bits of cotton drift through the air like traumatic dandelions. That was very good. Really nice. (laughs) I'm like sinking into the chair paying attention. (laughs) An exhausted Scarlet is draped over one of 27 fainting chairs in the space beneath a picture of her racist slave-owning bitch-ass grandmother. She woefully moans and brings her limp wrist up to her forehead multiple times. Oh, 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 I do declare, oh, 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 cornbread. Biscuits, mint juleps, slavery. Her her arm is way too weak. She tries again, struggling so hard under the weight of her own arm that she rolls to the ground. Oh, oh, why am I so tired from just doing everything on this plantation, everything? Why did my pappy have to die or or something similar to that event? I'm such a strong, independent, white, southern woman who believes that women can do things and be whole people and work so, so hard, which is why I'm so tired from working. I just wish I didn't have it so hard. I'm doing this again, y'all, all by myself. The world just doesn't know my hardships. If only things were different and I could be seen as a person. (laughs) My life is so hard. (laughs) Man, the 
bedroom door bursts open. Don't. Just, just don't. We fucking talked about this. Oh, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to call you then. I absolutely told you what to call me. But, but I'm tired. I can't remember. I, okay, I, I guess I can leave. All right, all right, all right. Hmm. Oscar winner Hattie McDaniel. Are you happy now? No, I'm, are you kidding? I'm never, I'm never fucking happy. What? What is it now? Oh, Oscar went ahead and McDaniel. You wouldn't understand. I just worked this plantation so hard. This war is so hard. Everything is so hard for me. <laughs> right. Because you do so much. What? What is it? You'll never know what it's like to work so hard and not be seen as a whole human being. Oscar went ahead and McDaniel. I'm so glad we're friends. Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> and you're here willingly on your own accord because we are best friend. I'm going downstairs. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. For fuck's sake, what? Can you? <laughs> can, can you carry me downstairs? Bitch. Can you carry me downstairs, motherfucker? If, if you don't get your whole people on and ass the fuck up out of here with your bullshit, I better roll your dumb ass down these wide ass staircases, you fucking lazy delusional heifer. Hattie! Hattie! Oscar went ahead and McDaniel. Please! Shut the fuck up! Scarlet rolls herself down the staircase and slams directly into the front door. Just then, there's a loud knock on the big ass plantation door on the slavery plantation, because that's where this is. <laughs> you know, it was so insane. I don't mean to interrupt, but like, I could see them actually writing it like that. Not, not saying because, <laughs> but like they say, because, because that's where this takes place. You know what I mean? Because that is the grand place that this is. <laughs> the plantation. The murder houses. <laughs> Scarlet remains on the ground. Oh, who could that be? Oh, Oscar went ahead and McDaniel, I do declare. Someone is at the door. But it opened the fucking door. Oh. But I do declare, can you get it? There's no response but silence. Scarlet groans and stands up, dusting her oblivious body off. <laughs> well, fine. I just have to do everything around here. Scarlet opens the door. A slight breeze blows and propels her backwards. <laughs> she, she falls down again. Rhett Butler enters. He is entirely too attractive for this whole situation. <laughs> he strokes his mustache and slicks his hair down, then whips around to the camera <laughs> making finger guns. <laughs> Rhett Butler, I'm in the Civil War. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Scarlet extends her limp wrist out. Oh my! Bourbon and cornbread and slavery and slavery and rape and so much rape and countless murders and families being ripped apart. <laughs> I'm Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> Rhett pulls Scarlett up by her limp white hand and grasps, then they grasp onto each other tightly and unnecessarily. I'm Rhett Butler. I'm in the Civil War. Pew, pew. Are you all right, ma'am? That breeze knocked you down. Oh my, yes. For, for a moment I was, they both turned to camera. Gone with the wind. 
gone with the wind. Scarlet breaks away from Rhett dramatically because she's ridiculous. Wow. What a delicate white flower. <laughs> I'm most certainly not. I work very hard to maintain this I do declare plantation all by my I do declare self alone with no help. I'm a strong and independent Southern woman who doesn't need any help. No help. Oscar winner Hattie McDaniels, Hattie, Hattie. Oscar winner Hattie McDaniels enters. What? Brett, this is my best friend in the whole wide slavery world. No. Oscar went ahead and McDaniel, can you please get this gentleman from the civil whore a nice cup of lemonade that I made all by myself? I made it. Brett Butler, I make the best lemonade this side of the slaveries. I do everything here. Everything. Oscar went ahead and McDaniel, go on, go on and get this attractive man some lemonade. I'm going to kill you when you're asleep. <laughs> Isn't she just the best? <laughs> pew, pew. I'm going to tell you right now, ma'am. She's uppity. You're uppity. And you're doing a terrible job of taking care of this place. I'm in the war. <laughs> oh, you have no idea how hard it is, Brett Butler. A white woman left alone to care for the slave plantation without any help. I work my fingers to the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> if I wrote that, I would have stood up and like walked around feeling like I was done for the day. <laughs> Thank you. I, I work my fingers to the fingers. Tapping a bell and ringing for Oscar Winner Hattie McDaniel and Butterfly McQueen to do things. And that is hard. Harder than your war. Harder than the transatlantic slave trade. Harder than being lynched. And I am. Uh, yeah, he left a while ago. Well, did he say when he would be back? I don't know. Tomorrow, I, you know what? I didn't hear him because I was uh, thinking about my children. They were stolen from me and sold by your fucking parents. It's the only thing I think about. It's the only reason that I stay here and try to somehow against all odds to scrape and save and plan and hysterically scream inside of myself every second of every day, hoping against all hope that they'll just be okay in the world and not die but I know that they very well will come to meet a violent death at the hands of pieces of shit like you, who- Scarlet awkwardly grabs Oscar winner Hattie McDaniel's hand passionately. Oh, I do declare. <laughs> You're always thinking about such trivial things. Now, let's focus on what I'm going to wear tomorrow when Brett, Brett, when Brett returns, I must find something to wear. Oscar winner Hattie McDaniel breaks free of Scarlet's grasp and exits. Wait, wait, wait. Oscar winner Hattie McDaniel carry me upstairs. My weak southern white legs. Hattie! Scarlet runs after Oscar winner Hattie McDaniel. It is tomorrow. Oscar winner Hattie McDaniel stands at the foot of the stairs in the disheveled parlor. There's a knock at the door. The door! The door! Oscar winner Hattie Mc... It's open! Rhett Butler enters. Pew pew, servant. It's me again from the Civil War. Fuck off. I'll be right down. Oh, Jesus. <coughs> yeah, I'm not announcing you. Just uh, why don't you walk your dumb ass down the stairs? Fine. Scarlet enters, but she's wearing the curtain. She walks down the stairs slowly, wearing what is very clearly a curtain. Oh, I, I do declare Brad Butler from the Civil War. What a surprise. I was just wearing this around my slavery plantation. <laughs> is that a curtain? I do declare fried chicken, no. These are my Southern fineries. 
It's still attached to the curtain rod. This is the style of the times, Mr. Brett Butler. How dare you insult me? I do declare. I do declare. No, I do declare. What the fuck? <laughs> Brett rushes over to Scarlett and mashes his face against her face really hard because that's how people kiss in old movies. Oh, oh, Brett, you've made me so happy. As of you, you crazy, crazy white woman. Oh, oh, Oscar went ahead of me then. No, this is just the best possible ending. Don't you feel wonderful about our newly found white, white love in the middle of the Civil War when there are clearly more important things to focus on? <laughs> Frankly, motherfucker, I don't give a shit. Everyone freezes. Only Hattie freeze frames. <laughs> Fist pumping and yell sings. Go with the wind! <laughs> and that's exactly how the movie is. Frankly, motherfucker, I don't give a shit is the t-shirt we have been talking about. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, it's so fun. I love this. I don't... I. I think you're closer than anyone would like to admit. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I am. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, I we am. can't watch it because these liberal media. There's, there's no way to watch it. <laughs> Where will we do it? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, of course. Uh, well, I hope you settle in from the move well and everything. Everyone, please we'll give another thank you to Jean for coming on here and telling us what. Uh, She's pretty sure Gone with the Wind is. Fuck that movie. <laughs> All right, everybody. We are going to be right back. I'm going to show you a little bit of stand-up for our next guest. Uh, this guy has been featured on Late Night. Here's a set here from him telling some jokes on Comedy Central. Please enjoy some comedy from Rob Hayes. Everybody, please give it up for Rob Hayes. Rob, thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. I always love doing uh, talking to someone for four or five minutes and then pretending that I just started talking to them when I say thanks for being here. It's the biz, you know? <laughs> it's the life we signed up for. Oh, the pre-talk and then the real talk. I, uh, I, I really do like that set. I watched it earlier. Um, the wedding speech joke is so funny. Someone interrupting is that that's one of my favorite jokes. Um, anyway, so Rob, you're in Atlanta right now. I don't mean to. Yes. So we're digitally going to do, we got some games that we're going to play. You notoriously won the closest build the perfect movie contest in the history of the podcast. I mean, and what was it? it? It's, really, it's really the fact that uh, Rotten Tomatoes is so culturally biased against black movies that uh, that's my real advantage. And you just knew that going in and CJ didn't take it into account. No, no, no. I didn't know that going in, but then I assumed, and then my, my assumption was correct. <laughs> I think it was like a 98% to a 99% victory, wasn't it? Something like that? Yeah. So, uh... That we're... being said, Sherman Showcase I got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, yeah? It comes on Friday on AMC, so you guys make sure you watch that. There you go. Watch it. That was seamless, right? That was seamless. <laughs> it was It was more seamless than Grubhub. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sherman sure, Showcase Friday. <laughs> so we want to learn a little bit about you. So we have a game here uh, on the podcast that we're going to play to learn a little bit more about you. And this game is called... A series of rapid fire questions Chosen from a series of rapid fire questions But you can take it I'll never get over how uh, overly good the music is compared to what it is for. Oh, man. Hey, man, pat yourself on the back. And whoever on the back made that, because 
Yeah, that was a jam. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually, and I did, if you look in the chat, well, not you, but everyone else, Tyler Boyd and Aaron Lee uh, are a couple musicians, and they made that, and you can email them if you like jingles like that. Listen to this one. This one I love. We played this earlier. It's crazy. Alright, but this game is a series of rapid fire questions from a series of rapid fire questions, but you can take your time. Alright? Okay. So I'm gonna you're gonna get and give me a number between one and fifty. We'll get some little background right. music here. And we're gonna start we I got a list of rapid fire questions and we'll start from whatever number you pick to learn a little bit more about Rob Hayes. I'm gonna go with number three. Number three. What movie have you seen the most? Probably coming to America. Yeah, what approximately? I don't know because I started watching it before I have memory. Oh really? Yeah, like I remember it being on, and then I remember watching it, and then I owned it. Okay, so just hours and hours and hours of catching parts you of it at a time. You can show me a frame. And I can tell you whether that's coming to America or not. Okay. You can show me cars parked in front of the Waldorf Astoria, and I'll be like, that's coming to America, or that's just footage of a hotel. <laughs> you could tell the B-roll from other B-rolls? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Like, you could show me a street, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming to America. Like, that's... All right, I was so disappointed when I finally went to Jackson Heights, Queens. I was like, man, this is... They shot this movie in Brooklyn. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, next question. Have you ever had any nicknames? Um, Rob is nickname for Robert. It is. Uh, before I was Rob, I was Bob. Really? Yes. Uh, my grandmother on my father's side called me Bob Bob because her husband was Bob. So I was the second Bob. Um... In college, I got made fun of for listening to Cameron. So my Facebook middle name was Killer Hayes. Well, Killer Rob. Okay. So, yeah, Robert Killer Rob Hayes. Okay. What is okay? Were you? Do you ever? You, you never did stand up as Bob Hayes, did you? No, no. All right. Next question. Uh, have you ever fired a gun? Yes. Next question. Only. Yeah in hunting as a child like, oh yeah um, yeah and not hunting actually just using a hunting rifle to practice shooting in case i hunted which i never did so i shot <laughs> some fago cans i shot you know uh uh i shot some fences but right. that's pretty much it yeah a tree yeah just the stuff that you shoot practicing uh, yeah I know she mm -hmm. like a can. Yeah, I've shot a lot of. I've missed a lot of cans. Yeah. Um. All right. If you could have any animal as a pet and it would be well behaved, what would you choose? So if I have an animal and a pet that's and it's well behaved. Yeah. Hmm. I want to. I'd have to get something exotic. You know what? Zebras are not meant to be domesticated because they have they. They act like donkeys and they're crazy, but if I could have the only zebra you could ride, that would be pretty dope. So it's like uh, physically a zebra, mentally a horse? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I can see that. All right, next question. What's your biggest fear? Uh, I have so many fears. I'm afraid of everything. Uh, the one that's probably the most irrational is fireworks. Really? Yeah, I don't know if you remember those Brooklyn Fourth uh, of July parties. But we spent were we together on the Fourth of July out. last year. We were, <laughs> yeah. we were. Yeah, you don't remember <laughs> me freaking out on the beach? No, I remember that someone fell off the top of the lifeguard stand and then pretended they weren't hurt, and that's what I really remember. About yeah, but it, it was a little kid, so it was yeah. like, oh, you'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, I think by then, th that day was an earthquake. Yeah. And then it was also, like, like, so it was like my first earthquake. And also I made the mistake of going to uh, Marina Del Rey. Yeah. So it was just like, I had been so traumatized by fireworks and natural disasters that by the time I saw you guys, 
I was like, cool. Yeah, it uh, <laughs> so sometimes it gets so crazy I forget about earthquakes, which is such an insane thing to say. But like, I'll just be like, oh yeah, there could be earthquakes. Like it, earthquakes don't care mm -hmm. what's happening, which feels like it should be illegal. But they don't. They just don't care. Uh, all right, pick one: two guys, a girl, or a pizza place. Uh, I'm gonna go with the pizza place. Smart, smart. Who was your first celebrity crush? My first celebrity crush. Um, I was told that I like Denise from the Cosby Show, but I didn't. Uh, I don't recall any of this. Okay. Um, if you let me, here we go. Where, what's your favorite chain restaurant? Sorry, my note thing closed. My favorite chain restaurant. Um, I, I was a big fan of Taco Bell and Burger King back in the day. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I've been I've been a big Chipotle guy recently. They they kind of like came in and took their place. Yeah, I'm doing a keto diet. They got like keto meals and whatnot. So how's that? You feeling better? I've lost some weight. I'm doing all right. Yeah, you know, yeah. I we'll was eating see. so bad for so long that I just ate normal for a couple weeks and lost weight. Does that make sense? It's it's like the. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. If you start eating like if you start cooking and making food like like you grew up eating. Yeah. It, I feel like that makes a huge difference. I mean, we eat so horribly and have such terrible schedules normally when when when, yeah. when outside is around that ha me having to live in some sort of like rational sleep and eating schedule, I lost weight doing nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Next question. What film bad guy do you align with the most? Film bad guy I align with the most. Hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm a, uh, hmm. That's tough. Hmm. That's tough. That's tough. It's okay, tough. okay. We can circle back if you want. Uh, you can always circle back. I'm, I'm going to go with the Riddler. Okay. <laughs> Any particular one or just like the, the canon idea of the Riddler? The can the can idea of the Riddler, you know my dude Edward Nigma. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I really Jim liked Carrey, him in the video Frank game Gorshin, that I played. You know what I'm saying. Like no matter uh, my dude from uh, the Adams family, that one episode that he filled in when Frank Gorshin was busy. You know what I'm saying. Like the cartoon one. Like, yeah. yeah. He, I always, I mean, I love Batman the animated series. It's it's scarier now as an adult to me than it was when I was a kid. Somehow. Only thing about the the animated series Riddler, he had only two question marks. He had one on his tie and one on his hat. He was real conservative with yeah. the question marks. You know, it's like I don't know if he had that many riddles because you know he only had two question marks on his whole face. Maybe he was like writing an email, so he was really concerned with his punctuation coming off as ag aggressive or whatever. You ever like? And he had yeah. a cane. His cane was a question. No, no, his cane was not a question mark. That's in the, that's in Batman and Robin. Yeah, dude, I had the action figure. You play with it too long, the question mark's gone. <laughs> it just becomes an exclamation point. Yeah, it's just a dude with a green suit on. <laughs> yeah, he was fair. I'm looking. It was just a question mark on his tie. Is the Riddler from the animated series, and that's it. Yeah, and the little Come purple on, mask, you very subdued. Um, you, can, you might actually be able to buy that on Amazon. I do love the animated series. It, it, it's real good. Uh, okay, well, here we are. Next question. What is a road or a street that pops into your head when you think about roads or streets? Hmm. One thing about roads, Glory Road. Okay. Which is a, a movie about basketball. Yeah. Um, I think about street. I think about Hill Street Blues, one of the illest... Uh, theme songs in the, in the TV show. Also, there was an Emmy powerhouse. I don't know if you've been looking at the Wikipedia, of the history of the dramatic category of the Emmys like you I have. You know, I haven't been. <laughs> you know, I, I, but yo, I, I'm ashamed moves. to say I haven't been. They was out there getting the votes, though. <laughs> oh, my God, they did. Yeah, where's the, they got a whole award section mm -hmm. here. It has its I, own I got article called Mad List of Awards recently. Received. 
And so I was watching Mad Men, and then I was found out that they won the Emmy four years in a row, and then I had to look at everybody. Oh yeah, and just I get into that sometimes, thinking what won. All, yeah, once you start looking mm-hmm. up how many, I because what I realized and and found out was that like in that whole like Steve Carell never won an Emmy for playing Michael Scott. Come on, man. And so then that got me down this whole award show: who should have won these things. Because it was like the guy from the Big Bang Theory kept winning. And so then you start looking up who won. And, and it kind of just sometimes one person wins it all. Like I think, didn't John Hamm only win one time ever for Mad Men? I think because Brian Cranston won every single year. Yeah. You can't really be mad. Same network. So, you know, he right. was around people who was happy. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, you got you to stand next to happy people at the party. All the way to be mad, yeah. <laughs> All right, we got a few questions left. Um, how many songs should an album have on it, ideally? 14 tracks. 14 tracks? 14 tracks, yeah. All right. Uh, More than 14 tracks, do you going to have some you got to skip? Less than 14, you gonna, you're going to be wanting more, and it's going to cause the body of work to be suppressed. Okay. I've been listening to old James Brown albums, and he got some albums. It's three tracks. And it's like the same track, <laughs> like part one and two, part one and two, part one and two. And yeah. it's like, but it's okay. entertaining though. So as someone who hosts a podcast about a specific artist and albums, Book of Yay, Kanye centric podcast with you and Chris, Life of Pablo, how do you feel about the evolution of the amount of tracks on that? I thought that was fun. At the time, I didn't have a streaming service, so every time a new version came out, I would download it. And so that ended up being cool because then I was able to compare the different versions. But the final version, I don't know how many people have listened to it recently, but some of the stuff they put in there, like the final mix, is really good. I like it. I And I'm a non-biased opinion. I like it more and more as it's uh, uh, gone on, as time has gone on, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I go back and, the, like, I think I listened to it driving, like, from San Francisco back down here in December. And I just remember being, every time a song came on, I was like, oh, I forgot I like this one. Oh, I forgot I like yeah. this one. Oh, I forgot this one's good. Everyone just seemed overwhelmed with it, I think, when it came out. Definitely. All right, last question. What conspiracy theory do you maybe kind of believe? What conspiracy theory do I kind of believe? Just watch the whole Epstein thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know if that's a real conspiracy. Yeah, I was going to say, what's the conspiracy you know that saying? he didn't do anything? Yeah, I, um, you know, he could be alive. I don't, you know, he could have been killed. I don't know. Yeah. I believe it, though. So you I think there's it. some sort of, uh, we don't really know what's going on there. I, th- I think that I think something happened like like more than just somebody killed himself in the shadows. Okay. 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 Um all right. All right. So that's learned a little bit. That's rapid fire. A series of rapid fire questions chosen from a series of rapid fire questions but you can take your time though. It's real nice. It's real nice. All right, chat. Chad, it's time to get in here. Chad, it's time for you to take on Rob in a round of Build the Perfect Movie. Build a perfect movie. So you guys are going to, if you don't know, Chad, if it's your first time here, if it's your first time here, here's how Build the Perfect Movie works. I'm going to give you a category. You will have to pick two movies from that category whose Rotten Tomatoes score adds up to as close to 100 as possible without going over. Does that make sense? Uh, two movies, Rotten Tomato scores will combine, going to as close to 100 as possible without going over. So, for instance, a perfect Robin Williams movie would be Happy Feet, which is a 76%, and RV, which is a 24%. That would be a perfect movie, I you know, in on paper. <laughs> I would not say an execution. Um, so what we're going to try and do now is build the perfect comedy. So Rob will pick one. And then, mm. chat, you will pick one, and then we will review our scores. And, chat, so you just throw some options out, and I will start a poll, if that makes sense, for your movies. And then, um, 
Rob, you can just sort of think on it for a minute whenever uh, you got your pick. Okay. And I'm just going to sort of talk as chat throws some options out too. Mars Attacks, they got in there. When do I when do I say mine? You can do yours whenever you want. Okay. Okay, would you say I've never heard of boat trip. Is that the same as float trip? A boat trip is a is a phase on love in there and they, they go on a, a no 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 boat trip is with uh Cuba Gooden Jr., right? Uh I uh yes it is. Alright, I didn't know about it. Yeah. Um, We're doing okay. comedy. Build the perfect comedy chat. So Build just throw out, you got, you got comedy. Boat Trip and Mars Attacks. All and, right. Yeah. Um, I got to do both of them. You just top. do one now, and then we'll review Okay, your score okay. I'm going to do uh, Ace Ventura When Nature Calls. The second one. All right, chat. You have Boat Trip, Mars Attacks, Dracula Dead and Loving You, and Stuck on You. It won't let me put that whole title in and airplane. So you have one minute to vote. That poll is up there now. Start voting on it. I just sort of threw the first ones that I saw in there. Sorry about that. So you guys got one minute and you're doing when nature calls for your first one here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Rob, I'm going to give you your percentage now so you can go okay. ahead and start thinking about your second movie. Uh, Ace Ventura. Nature Calls. Ace Ventura, when Nature Calls, is a 31%. So you are looking for the magical 69% for a perfect movie. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Chat, you got to get in there and vote. Good. We got That's Mars Attacks good. and Airplane tied together here. Okay. Is Mars Attacks a comedy? Um, I would say it's satirical enough to fall in there, right? You know, I mean, I took it real serious when I saw it. <laughs> I was eight, you know what I'm saying? Um, Chat, Airplane's about to win. You better go vote. Let's Airplane, see, let's Airplane see. is your first movie. Let's see, what am I going to do? All right, so here we go, Chat. Your first movie is Airplane. Let me find it. Right. It is a, oh my God, 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's a I'm 97 on... Chat, you need a comedy that is 3%... Or less. Three percent or less. Rob, you need sixty-nine percent. Uh chat. Whenever you're ready, start throwing some examples out there. I'm gonna go with the Ghostbusters with the women, the lady Ghostbusters, the um Okay. Leslie Jones and Kristen Wig and Yeah. Kate McKinnon and my man Tho. All right, Chet, you have Blended, Ishtar, Jack and Jill, and The Love Guru, and one more. You want one more in there. Funny people, I see. Those are your first ones. You got one minute. Go vote. You're looking for 3% or less. Someone said Airplane Mode. Is that a movie I didn't know about? Um, all right, Ghostbusters movie, 2016. All right, Jack and Jill's running away with it. It's up at the top of the chat. It's up at the top of the chat. Go ahead and go up there. Get that vote. Man, Jack and Jill is really... Love Guru might be real low, too. Did you watch this... Uh, um, what are the... There's two new movies I wanted to watch. Uh, the... Stat, Pete Holmes. Pete Holmes. The Pete... Davidson movie I wanted to watch. I, I haven't seen it yet, but I, I do want to watch it. And then the uh, the Five Bloods I wanted to watch as well. Yeah, I want to watch it too. What a weird world we're in where a Spike Lee movie is just on my TV one day. Isn't that crazy? Crazy. Next to the rest of his movies. <laughs> and, and next to 800 <laughs> shows I've never heard of. Yeah. All right, let's review our scores. They're going with Jack and Jill. Um, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, 31%. Ghostbusters, 2016, 74%. Just over. Oh! Just over. Just over. Mm. Airplane, 97%. Jack and Jill, 3%. <laughs> Chat perfected it. Perfected? Oh, wait, I even have this here. I even have this here. 
It is literally a 3%. Wow. That's crazy. Adam Sandler's face in the poster looks like he knew it was going to be a 3%. Um, Andy Samberg's in that one, right? Oh, I don't know. I haven't Jack and Jilled before. That sounds like I'm masturbating. All right. <laughs> we'll do one more. We'll do one more. Then you can okay. maybe leave on a draw yeah. here with them. You can even pick the category if you want. If not, I got a bunch. Okay. Right what, what are the categories? We got a... Oh, it's you can name almost anything you want. Okay. I can name anything I want? Yeah. All right. Um, mm, nah, that's not even a category. Uh, hmm. Buddy cop. Buddy cop movies. I love it. Buddy cop movies. Two buddy cop movies have to add up to as close to a hundred percent as possible without going over. Obviously. We're pretty lean in on Buddy Cop if you guys need to slide one in. You know what I mean? Yeah, they don't got to be buddies. They don't have to be buddies. They so can hate each other. Chat, start throwing your Buddy Cop movies up there. You're, and then Rob, whenever you're ready. Okay. I'm going to go with Blue Streak. I love Blue Streak. All right, they got Pop Out, The Wrong Guys, Turner, and... They really went in here. Sorry, I just took the first five. <laughs> Tango and Cash, Lethal Weapon 3, Cop Out, The Wrong Guys, and Turner and Hooch. Those were the first five that I saw. It was going too fast, so you guys got to vote on that. Blue Streak was actually the first DVD I ever owned. Oh, man. It came with The Skulls. Diamonds Are Girls Best Friend by Jay-Z on the soundtrack. I would There's always... also a Cash Money record that's on there that they were playing on the radio that I didn't hear since but we were hype when we heard it in the theater <laughs> i was so i think every time i got pizza for is the wrong guys even a movie or did they mean the other guys no the wrong guys is a movie the wrong guys is a movie um i was so ex every time i got pizza for like two years i would be like I would just go, got to get the pizza to the police officers every <laughs> single time. <laughs> um, oh, Lethal Weapon 3, taking it. Tango and Cash. All right, Lethal Weapon 3 is their first movie here. Okay. Let's review some scores. Blue Streak, 36%. <laughs> Lethal Tomatoes. Weapon 3, 60%. 60%. I'm typing this in all wrong. 60% chat. There you go. So chat, you're looking so, for a 40%. Chat, you're looking for a 40%. Rob, you're looking for a 64. A 64%. 64. And you can't use Lethal Weapon 3. When I can't use Lethal Weapon 3. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to go Rush Hour 2. Uh, it might be too much. I don't know. They hate Martin Lawrence. Maybe they hate Chris Tucker. All right, Chad. I see 22 Jump Street, Chips the Remake, Bad Boys, Demolition Man. I'm not even going to let you put bad boys in there. You need a 40%, and we all know it's going to be way more than that. Um, the Heat. All right, one more, and we got your poll. I'm taking yeah, bad boys right, out. Three. I, I, I think all the... I'm not going to let you put any of the bad boys in, because I think they're all good and way over 40%. Um, stop or my mom will shoot. Never even heard of that. Uh, here we go. Poll is there. Thanks for subscribing, Swalter guys. Uh, someone said they didn't like Bad Boys 2? That's crazy to me. Come on, man. I love Bad Boys 2. What more did you want? That was in the time where... I, I don't know. I love that Come movie. on, man. I like all of them. They, they infiltrated the clan. <laughs> right. They stopped ecstasy pills before Molly came out. Gabriel Union has on a bikini. Like, what more do you want in a movie? Did you decide on your second one? Who, me? Yeah. 
Oh, all right. Well, now I'm about to switch it. Because I, I said rush hour too, but I was scared that I'm scared. You got time. You got 10, 15 seconds. We didn't even have a six. Uh, 64. A 64. Hmm. Ugh. I don't gonna go rush hour three. Rush hour three. Uh, the, I'm gonna be way under. All right, and chat, you're going with stop or my mom will shoot. All right, here we go, chat. Lethal weapon three, sixty percent. Stop or my mom will shoot. Eight, eight <laughs> percent. So that is a sixty-eight percent. I'm gonna put demolition man in there because that was a. Cl I think I uh, yeah. Demolition Man is a 60%. So you would have gone over with that one, but you guys are at a 68, 68. Blue Streak, 36%. Rush Hour 2, 18%. It's a 54. You're at a 54, or Rush Hour 3, sorry. Oh. 18%. I was like, dang. Oh, man. That's a low score and win right there, but they still take it. Man. Sorry. <laughs> shout out to Jackie Chan. Shout out to uh, 18. I could have went with Showtime. I think the first rush hour was only a 60. Really? Yeah. That's just, people were just a little weird with it. I think every buddy cop movie from 1998 to 2009 was 60%. That's crazy. In my head, Rush Hour 2 is one of the greatest movies ever made. Yeah. One of the money talks is like, one of like like it's like Citizen Kane up there, like Money Talks is like like way up there. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't even I wasn't even gonna utter the words just because that's one of my favorite movies. Period. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to know what it is on on Rotten Tomatoes. I'll, what is it? It's sixteen. Money Talks. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here, man. Rush Hour 2 is a 52. I'm calling them It's all over the they're... place. They're all over the place. Are they West Coast or East Coast? Because I'm calling them at 9 a.m. business hour. <laughs> not... You might have to call early if it's like the unemployment phone where you just call and hope to get through for 11 hours. Man, yeah. I'm... No, I'm definitely calling tomorrow because that's ridiculous. 16? <laughs> Bad Boys 2 is only 23. Are you serious? Yeah. It's crazy. I don't think anyone liked fun movies. You had to be like... Oh, damn. Yo, this, come on. The cultural... Come on, man. I'm trying to think. I, I I can't think of a buddy cop movie that doesn't have black people in it. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Uh, mm. The Other Guys. I did like that. The Other that Guys. What, what, what did Will that Ferrell. one have? Although... It, that was Will Ferrell and uh, Mark Wahlberg. That's probably, that's a 78. Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, <laughs> what does 48 hours have? The other, the other guys is funny. What does 48 hours have? Let's see. Let's see. 93. All right. Okay. <laughs> We're back. Okay. Right, okay. I was to say, if, if 48 <laughs> hours ain't like up there, then your whole your whole website, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm about to go viral taking down Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Tomorrow. Oh man, I almost told you it was eleven just to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh everybody, please give it up for Rob Hayes. Uh exclamation point Rob, you'll get some ways to follow him there. Rob, thank you for being here. Um, oh, thanks for having me. Of course, everyone. Uh, please get up for Rob. We will be right back. Friday, AMC. Check it out. German Showcase. Everyone's got DVR. You can DVR stuff. I oh, know thanks for having me. Man. Thanks so much for having me. Oh. He could give me therapy. Uh -huh. What's the use of therapy? Okay. All right. You don't want to change, babe. I talk too much when I got nothing to say. Maybe it's to get away. It's easier to walk away. I got to find.
right, everybody, please give it up for our final guest here of today. This is the test of it. We good? We all right? We good? Feel good? I feel good. All right, everybody, please give it up for Lindsay Adams. Lindsay, thank you for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Of course, uh, of course. The So, we talked about my theory about Pop-Tarts being smaller. Now, we're going to continue the Pop-Tart content uh, with your culinary expertise. I mean, look, here's the thing. I've been in quarantine for a while. I bake all the time. And there are a million Pop-Tart flavors. So, I decided to have a Pop-Tart tournament. Great. I made a full fucking bracket. Okay. I don't even know how to do sports. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I have to like Google. Wait, do you know how a bracket works? Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know it's like self explanatory to a certain degree, but like I just still, I had, a, it was a process, whatever. I made brackets. So these, I have four Pop Tarts, four flavors that um need to be shaved down to two so okay. this is like the preliminary final round what do yeah. you call what do you call it if it's the semifinals the semifinals okay. this is the semifinals all the other ones made it to like the finals already yeah this is the semifinals so the two flavors that we have the four flavors that we have we have chocolate chip versus chocolate pretzel Okay. And then we have cinnamon sugar pretzel versus OG cinnamon brown sugar. Oh, wow. Okay. So these are, there's a lot of similarities here in these four flavors. Yeah. That was why I couldn't match them. Honestly, like, look at all these pop charts right now. This is like actually embarrassing. <laughs> Imagine, I just imagine like uh, someone, something happens or you're gone, someone breaks into your apartment and then they just slowly back out because they're like, well, she can't afford to lose anything. There's literally, I know it's so sad. We had to, my boyfriend and I had to cover them so we would stop eating them because they just kept putting off doing the tournament. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is like, <laughs> it's, it's our life. This is my life um been fully engrossed but yeah these are like oh the other ones have like like it's gonna be like a strawberry milkshake versus fruit loop like it's like funky flavor versus funky flavor yeah. so these were too similar therefore they had to be eliminated or shaved down that makes so, that makes sense you need uh only one can survive amongst there they're, it's like a sibling rivalry where one can make it in type of thing Exactly. Do you eat Pop Tarts? I mean, are we adults? We shouldn't be eating. Pop -Tarts. I I think I took some time off thinking that it wasn't an adult thing to do, but I started eating them again. And my friend Alex, uh, I think I just said something about Pop Tarts, like some dumb tweet, like two years ago. I was like, Pop Tarts are back in my life, and he called me, and he was like, I've been getting <laughs> back into Pop Tarts, and I haven't been knowing if I can tell people that I eat them again. That's so funny. <laughs> I was like this is so, um. Yeah. So, and then I have the theory about how they're getting smaller and right. I'm, I'm very certain they're getting smaller. So they've been around. It's just, it may, for some, whatever reason I've convinced myself that it's better than buying a, like ice cream or something. Right. Look, I understand this because it's, is it because it's packaged individually? I do eat less or I eat them slower because I have to open them. Sure. And because like, I'm the kind of person who, First of all, my mom raised me on like all organic food and okay. like couldn't, I wasn't allowed to have like any preservatives or anything. So all of this like foray into fun stuff like this has been in my adult life. So I just eat like a 12 year old. Okay. That's um, kind of nice though. Yeah. So this is all like fairly like new uh, ish, but I definitely am like the kind of person who will like open it up and be like, I'm not going to fucking toast it. I don't have time for this. And then, you know, it's not a <laughs> 45 seconds. Yeah. I honestly, I, I like can't wait. It's too long. They have to wait for it to cool. Speaking of which I'm going to go ahead and put 
one of the chocolate chip and one of the pretzel chocolate ones Great. in the toaster while we're doing it so they can right them. i've seen the shows and now here's where we do the time lapse <laughs> yeah exactly because it's oh, actually four hours you open the, the toaster. toaster now and you're like and these ones i put in here before you got here <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, should I pre-do them? And then it's like, it's literally like not a minute. Uh, Have you had the pretzel one? No, I haven't. This is once again, Alex and I had a long conversation. I'm afraid to try them. Uh, they're re okay. I've tried them both, um, and they're really fucking good. Okay. All right, I don't know what happened in their weird pop tart lab, but that like of all things, they were like. Yeah, we got to do pretzel ones. Is, is it, so so is it like a pre, is the whole thing? I don't want to call it the breading. Is that what I would call it? The breading? No, is that a pretzel I, now instead? The crust? Can you hold it closer? People are asking if you'll hold it closer to the camera. Yeah. The crust is a pretzel or is it like a salty crust? Oh, wow. Yeah. So the crust is the pretzel. Um and the inside is like whatever, uh, whatever filling they decide. They only have cinnamon sugar and um, and uh, chocolate right now, which is fine because like <laughs> I don't know what else you need that goes with that. But right. if they're gonna fuck with the crust, they should do other stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Like why? Well, I don't know. There's got to be other fucking things they can do with it. I don't know. Yeah, that's, I mean, so let's think about graham cracker. Someone just said that's true. There's all these sort of, uh, I don't know what a toaster strudel is made of, but it's a little bit flakier. I feel like they could get into some sort of like, I guess they, do you think they would make like an artisanal one that would be like the flaky toaster strudel type of thing? You, do you ever go to a coffee shop and they have those, they call them, they're like, we have homemade pop tarts and they're like $5. They yeah. suck every time. I've made homemade pop tarts and they suck. And I put a lot of, I made them on a Twitch stream. Like, I think it was like two years ago. I made them. And by the time we got to like drizzling the stuff over it, I was like, this looks heinous. I'm done. It's not good. <laughs> There's no time for this. Um, but yeah, I, it's, you just shouldn't fuck with it. Like right. let it be. Yeah. Although they're normally bigger though, right? At bakeries. They're like, a, they look more, they look like you cut the roof of a pot pie off. <laughs> and that's like what they're serving you. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, fuck, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. I don't, I guess I can't think of any other thing that they could put on the outside besides pretzel. Like what? Yeah. And I wouldn't have even been able to think of pretzel. But they should have some weird tangent of savory pop tarts. That would be kind of dope. That would be nice. So what is uh? So you you've got those two toasted here. Only one of these can yeah. actually make it into the bracket. Exactly. So they're warm now. They're not too hot. So which one should I try first? I think try the non pretzel first. If I'm if I'm making a choice here. Okay. All right. So I'll do that. Mmm, and she's like a chocolate chip cookie. Here, wait. You can see it like oozes out pretty good. Yeah. That's so, what you want. That's nice. So is it's that one a... consistent filling, or is it one of the ones that has sort of two filling changes? If that makes sense. No, no, it's one consistent throughout. I'll bring it up again, and then it's like the chocolate chips are like in the top. Okay. I actually made ice cream with. Uh, chocolate chip cookie or chocolate chip pop tarts and it was so fucking good it tasted like a um toll house ice cream cookie sandwich oh wow mm -hmm. so that was like pretty fun i've been eating right, so more I'll... ice cream than I, I like to just because i've been seeing how much of activists ben and jerry's is and using that as justification to go buy ben and jerry's ice cream but they are a great company <laughs> It's so good. They're, it's like the best of the, they're, they're the most fun, like, combinations. Yeah. And... All right, let's see okay. how this pretzel one does toasted. That's very good. It is good? 
I always, That's very how, I, for some reason, the idea of a hot pretzel seems so weird to me until I realized that that's like a carnival food. So it's like a more, th- it's like a thicker filling, if you can see. I don't know if this is like gross, but it's thicker. So it's not like oozy. And if there's also not as much of it, like in comparison, mm-hmm. they're not, this is thinner. Is it because so, the pretzel takes up more? Okay. It's like those I mean, Reese's peanut butter cups that are out now where they, they have like a, ch- a a chocolate more chocolate reese's and a more peanut butter reese's and i just can't just figure out who would get the more chocolate one i know i think the reese's is perfect like I, it's i think it's the best candy it's really hard to me- it's just the right everything i really like reese's you know somebody told me on my stream like i think it was like two weeks ago or something have you ever seen peanut butter pop tarts no no. Apparently they exist unless they were fucking with me. Uh, they exist and I would die to have them. That sounds good. Like peanut butter chocolate. Yeah. Like a Halloween pop tart. Yeah, basically. Those are But the, here's yeah. the thing, it's like this is good, but this has like more depth of flavor. Okay. So it makes me want to go back for more. Okay. Whereas this, I mean, look, this is an excuse to eat pop tarts too. So, <laughs> who are we kidding? Right, but oh, someone just put a link into the peanut butter pop tarts. Right, I, if, if you uh, you have them both in front of you, you want to eat the pretzel one. Yeah. You just like if I had to choose the way that I think about it is this: like, if I had to give one to my boyfriend and keep one for myself and like be okay with watching him eat one, which would it be? Okay. Um, I like and that. that, yeah, chocolate chip. Also, it's just, it's got a graham crackery flavor. It's just not as good. I also could eat like 40 of these. They're smaller. I wonder if the ounces are... Have you looked at the ounces? When I first had the the theory, the ounces people said were the same. Um, yeah. But I I think it might have been a frosting filling to breading ratio change, and I started looking up like the price of filling, and I, you can't find consistent numbers. And I was trying to see, you know what I mean? Because you always hear about yeah. these companies where someone's like, you know, if we use uh, one, it's basically like the, if we switch to one ply, we save ten million dollars a year type of thing. Where like right. if you switch, if we did one percent less filling and one percent more breading, we would save a million dollars or whatever. I feel like that's what happened. Whatever they can eat a dick. Just give us good pop tarts, you fucking wieners. <laughs> so so what's happening now with this bracket? The pretzel's gonna make it in. Is that your thoughts? Yeah. So now pretzel is gonna go up against either cinnamon sugar pretzel or. OG cinnamon and brown sugar. So I'll scooch them to the side. Okay. Or when is and I do have pants on, even though it looks like my dad. I don't. I just want everyone to know that. They're pants. Um anyway. So Oh, I like how that pretzel one looks. The pretzel one is pretty. It's pretty. It's enticing. And it's like you think, did you have Auntie Ant? Where did you grow up? Missouri. Yeah, we had Auntie Anne's. Okay. Auntie Anne's was like the OG mall Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pretzel for me. So like that's what, yeah, you would think like cinnamon sugar pretzels. Yeah. I Um, I still get Auntie Anne's at airports sometimes. Do you really? Yeah. What a treat. It's crazy. I got it at, uh, yeah, sometimes it's like that or... Because all the airport restaurants will open up early, and sometimes that'll be the closest thing to a breakfast one that doesn't have an insane line. Because it'll Shit. be like cafe with a breakfast sandwich, Auntie Anne's, or like a cheeseburger. And so I'm like, well... Do they, at the airport, do they still like make it in front of you? Yeah. Shit. With the, the, the thin it out and then the flip into the pretzel shape. And then they just dip it like fully in butter. Oh, yeah. Oh. And that's then, so... but it's good for you because they just they make it right there. Yeah, exactly. It's fresh. You know, there's no <laughs> there's no like preservatives or anything. Do they have pretzel donuts? That just occurred to me. I remember the cronut being a huge thing that everyone freaked out about. 
I don't remember. Right. Um, I don't know. Look it up. I wonder if you can make a pretzel donut. Okay, oh, well, for sure. Mental note. Well, here they are. I. Um, of course, there is. Okay, it's a glazed so let pretzel. Me show you. Oh, go ahead. It's a glazed pretzel, and it looks incredible. Yeah, it's a glazed pretzel. Okay, yeah. let me show you what the pretzel one looks like up close. Yeah, I like so. that. That that looks nice. Look, I like that they did this as if we give a shit. The tire like, treading on the back. Yeah, like <laughs> like that's supposed to make it look like the underside of a pretzel. Like, right. okay, you fooled me. Right. It's like if you texture a hot dog into look, yeah. make it look like something. Like, look, we know this isn't this. Or putting grill marks on yes. like chicken. <laughs> or like when you see yeah, when you see grill marks on a tofu in a packaging at a grocery store, and you're just like, who? Yes, is this for? you're like. Cool. <laughs> Guess what? You fooled me. And then this is OG cinnamon sugar. Yeah, yeah. So it's like this looks very plain and not good, in my opinion. That was always one that I I was never the a big fan of it. Anyways, I I remember that one because I always thought it was the frosting was always weirdly off centered and it was mostly crust. Well, it's like honestly, they could try harder with this frosting on this on this crust. Okay. Like yeah. this is like wearing nude underwear <laughs> for white people. It, yeah, it does. It looks like a, a penny hose ad. It's weird. It's uh but I'm gonna stick the I'll stick these in now so they get all hot and delicious. I wonder, should we taste? I wonder if they what they taste like cold. Never mind. That's just me wanting to eat them. Um <laughs> you know what they pretty much know what they're gonna taste like and you just want them. Yeah, I mean, I've had all of the ones we have here. I've had at some point when we when actually when Corona was first happening, I got sick and I didn't have like my sense of taste and smell went away. Okay. And as it was coming back, I kept trying to eat things that had like strong flavor, and the pretzel pop tarts had like a strong flavor. So okay. I just kept getting boxes of them and eating it. <laughs> I like that. My my history with pretzel popcorn. <laughs> right, that's like your rosebud, your flashback to where it all started. I mean, it is. And they were new then and they're new now. Yeah. But I feel, what was your quarantine go-to food? Are you still quarantining? Yeah, yeah, still, still quarantining. And I mean, I've been kind of eating the same. I've, I've got, I eat the same salad every single day. Just to force what, myself to eat it. What's in the salad? Like, I actually ate the whole box without it going bad. It felt very great. Do you know what I mean? When you buy like the yeah. tub, and I got the larger tub, but it's always like a mixed greens, uh, feta cheese, strawberries, carrots, walnuts, Ooh. chicken. Yum. Yeah. That's great. I never get the. I actually arugula makes me want to. It actually does make me throw up. Really. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I have like a weird gag reflex. I've tried, I, I I don't know if it's a mental thing, but I've tried, I was at a French restaurant and there was arugula in my sandwich. Mm -hmm. And I just sat there and I was like, just swallow it, just swallow it, just swallow. And then I was like, I have to go to the bathroom. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you can't choose how you react to eating stuff. It's embarrassing. What is what is it? Is it parsley or what is it that some people think tastes like soap? Oh, um, cilantro. Cilantro. I'm glad I don't because it's fucking delicious. Yeah, it is soapy to me, and I it's crazy. I even know that it's just a yeah. weird thing that it tastes like that, but I can't change it. I thought I could like mind over matter it, and I can't. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm grateful that that's like my really like my only food thing that I really don't like. I also prefer to not eat carrots. Yeah. And never have. And I cut the stems off uh broccoli. I'm a child. <laughs> I like carrots when I use a uh um I don't know what to call it, what the thing a cheese grater to shred them down. So that's what I do when I put them in there. Got it. Yeah. I just like the idea of those big crinkle cut carrots like makes me want to like throw up in my mouth. Yeah, I don't like a big thick, don't like a big thick carrot. Not a fan. I did just make a really good sat like summer salad though. That was like 
my mom used to make it just tomatoes, red onions, balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper, and basil. All right. It doesn't taste it's like um, fresh. It's a, an acid reflux. Uh, <laughs> All right. I want to see which one of these you like. I want to see if that one is as bad as okay. I remember. I think it's cool. Which one should I try? Non pretzel first? Yeah. Okay. Break I'm going to Because I want to see it. what the middle looks like. Okay. See I'm that? Still disappointed in this one. Still. I mean, it's pretty like thick ish. So let's see. I should have done this with the other ones. I mean, you can see the sugar crystals. Okay. That's really good. It is. Fuck. All right. Well, Fuck. Well. Well. That tastes. Have you ever had the crispy end of a um, a cinnamon roll? Yeah. That's what that tastes like? Okay. No. The crispy end of a cinnamon, cinnamon I'm roll. I'm getting cinnamon. so hungry. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I have uh, my parents sent me Kansas City barbecue for my birthday, and I've been eating it every day, and so I get to eat more of it now, and I'm very excited. It's so fun. That sounds delicious. You ever just have food sitting in the other room? Like, you know what I mean? When you're like, I know what yeah. my next, very rarely do I know what my next thing I'm going to eat is. Yeah. Especially for dinner. And now I'm just like, I can't wait. I usually end up eating like loose salami. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this like, was fun. Really? It came in a big box and I had like dry ice for a day or two, which was fun. Ooh. I know I didn't do anything with it, but I would look at it. That's fun. That's what we, when I was in musical theater when I was a kid, that's what we would use for like smoke. Oh yeah. People loved using dry, dry if you're eighth grade to junior year high school, you love dry ice. It's yeah. <laughs> just, you, right. know. you just want to put your tongue on it even though you're not supposed to. Okay. All right. Okay. This smells very good. Just so you know. Okay. So let's break it. Ooh. It's a little chewy. Yeah. Here. Okay. Okay. It's it's like got, but here's the thing. Look, look at this like massive hole where there's no filling. That is crazy. Like, what is See, that? That's what I thought the other one was gonna have was this poor distribution of wealth. All right, let's try. Damn. My instincts Damn, are wrong. I mean, I don't think that those two flavors go together. Okay. When you're like, unless it's on the outside, it has to be a reverse. Okay. That's just not that. You know what I think part of it is? The cinnamon sugar gets drowned out by the pretzel. And so you would have to have more filling for it to be good. Okay. So this one's basically a pretzel. Yeah. It just tastes like a pretzel. It's not fun. Okay. So our blue boys went in there. Yeah. I mean, this tastes like a cinnamon bun. Okay. What a... Oh, man, I want a Pop-Tart so bad. So what, how, what, how does everyone watch you finish the bracket? Let's talk about um, this. Well, you can watch me on Twitch. I will uh, bring it onto there. And then you can also follow me on Instagram. And I'm going to post like the full videos and everything. I'm... I am. I cannot believe how emotionally invested I am in the Pop-Tart bracket. Where I'm like, once this is done, I'm going to text Alex and let him know that there's something out there he can love. <laughs> I'll send it to you. It's like okay. very, I'm trying to figure out how to take the watermark off of some website that I yeah. made it on. What is, your, what is your Twitch link? Um, it's big stuff with Lindsay. That's right. So it's just one thing. There we go. Um, and then my Instagram is big stuff W Lindsay. So it's a little shorter. Fake stuff. There we go. There we go. So now we got your personal stuff. We got your bacon stuff. Um, yeah. when's the okay. next bake stuff stream? Um, it's Friday at five. Awesome. Uh, five p. Uh, <laughs> I, five. I've, I've said PST as PM all of the time. Was that what you were about to do? Yeah, I was going to say. I was 
I was thinking both. It's yeah. at 5 p.m. <laughs> Pacific time. So right. 8 p.m. Eastern. I miss the days where I the stuff was live, and so I didn't really have to tell people what time zone it would be. Sometime soon. I know. Exactly. All right. So who's Just your, look out. Before, before we let you go, who's your favorite? Who do you think's the front runner for the whole bracket? If you had to go with your gut instinct, who's going to be hard to beat, and why is it Blueberry? This is hard because I'm not a chocolate person, so maybe I'm a little biased. But I honestly think that brown sugar cinnamon has really? like a real fucking shot. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> I actually will see. Okay. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having uh, everybody, me. Everybody, please say thanks to Lindsay. Please say goodbye. Check those links out. And we will be right back. Saturday cartoon. I want to be the jam. Thank you. Thanks for that. Thanks for subscribing. Set, yeah, set, set tired clown. Thanks for following. Did that link, I did I get the wrong the link in there for those? Maybe I typed it in wrong. The Instagram's working. Tattoo. The Twitch one's Just not. Let me figure it out. The man. I never was oh, here we go. It's, it's a W as well. They're both Ws. There we go. Someday there we go. You'll it's so great. funny watching her do the cooking thing. And the, the follower on it. Some days you'll feel so I gotta get that a little quieter. Look at that. How are we doing, everyone? I think I got the right link in there. You feel good? We feel good? Good? Relative? Um. Oh, shit. I didn't even tell you guys about this. I got these stickers. Look at that. Down below. Down below the stream. You can get these. They're a few bucks. I'll send you some. Um, but they're right there. They're cool square stickers. So if you want to get some of those, there's not that many. I didn't get, I only got a few. Um, but so just below the stream i got a link to the merch down there there's those also if you like the podcast i got a few a very few of these things little keychains made i don't even know how to sell them yet because i don't have key rings so i got to get key rings for these and then i'll have those posted on instagram for the show uh thank you guys so much here we are look at this i could probably turn it feels a little it keeps rotating you guys feel all right thanks for hanging out yeah this is fun. Gene scene is so funny. That was crazy. I was laughing so hard. Yeah, I don't really have keychain stuff either, but these guys are pretty shiny. Um, sweet everybody, thanks for being here. I don't know what we're gonna do on Saturday. I'll figure something out, hopefully. Maybe just play some games. Uh, please follow the show if you haven't. Subscribe if you want to do that. No pressure. Uh, do what you can. Help people out. Not me. Just this week. Find some people. Help them out. Do what you can. I appreciate y'all being here. This is very fun. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for listening to my haikus. Thanks for being part of the show. Be happy. Be well. Be safe. Be as sane as you can. But do what you can. Yeah, yeah, we'll play some games on Saturday and uh, maybe show my never aired MTV pilot of First Comes Love. I think I got that around here somewhere. I shot a pilot with MTV for a show that never happened. And it's sitting on my YouTube right now. I feel like they won't get mad, but maybe they will. Who knows? All right, everybody. Uh, you know where I'm at. You know what's going on. Congrats to people who won the Jaws things. And we'll talk to you soon. This is just too many ideas. I appreciate y'all. Bye.